In this problem, we are given a polynomial, and we're supposed to write it in factored form, so we need to find all the factors. And we're also given a little additional information, which is that 3i is a 0. Normally, we would use a rational 0 theorem, find a 0, divide by the factor, reduce the degree by 1, find a 0, uh, divide by that factor, reduce the degree, etc., here we're given some information that will help us get started a little faster. So we know x equals 3i is a 0. We could write it as 0 plus 3i, and so we see the real part is 0, the imaginary part is 3i. The conjugate pairs theorem says that if we have our polynomial with real coefficients, so all of the coefficients here are real numbers, they almost always are in this class, if the conjugate pairs theorem says if we have a complex zero, the conjugate also has to be a zero. So that means the conjugate, we write that as a bar, zero plus three i conjugate is zero minus three i, which we could just write as negative three i. That means that negative three as i is also a zero. All right, let's go ahead and write these out. So we have x equals three i is a zero and the factor would be x minus 3i. And for x equals negative 3i, the factor that corresponds to is x plus 3i. It would be a big pain, and I haven't taught you how to do this, if you did x minus 3i dividing into p of x. I don't want to spend time writing p of x here. Uh, this would be very difficult to do. You're going to have to do po uh, complex division, so that's really annoying. But what we can do is we can multiply the factors together and then divide by that product. And the good news is when we multiply these factors, there won't be an imaginary part. So we multiply here. We are multiplying conjugates. That means the outside inside terms will cancel. The outside term is 3xi. The inside term is negative 3xi, and they're going to cancel out. So we just have x squared minus 3i squared, which is x squared minus 3 squared i squared. And that is x squared. 3 squared is 9, so it's x squared plus 9. The i squared is negative 1 and that turned the minus into the plus. So we have x squared plus nine. This is a product of factors, which means it's also a factor of the polynomial, and I can divide by this. Now, normally you could just write x squared plus nine, but we want to include all powers of x. So x squared plus zero, x to the first plus nine, is gonna divide into p of x, 3x to the fifth, minus 14x to the fourth, plus 40x cubed, minus 120x squared, plus 117x, and plus 54. All right, I'm only gonna do the first uh, part of this, just the first uh, going into the 3x to the fifth term. So I need to multiply x squared to get 3x to the fifth. So it's going to be 3x cubed. Now I'm going to distribute it here. 3x cubed times x squared is 3x to the fifth. That's why we chose 3x cubed. <clears throat> 0x times anything would be 0x, but if we pay attention to the powers of x, it's plus 0x times x cubed is x to the fourth. And then 3x cubed times 9 is 27x cubed. And of course, we're subtracting. If you're a synthetic division person, you can't do what I'm doing. I recommend you don't use synthetic division because it is uh, not flexible. And you can't divide by anything except for x minus a. You can't divide... Uh, x squared plus or minus anything. Uh, so long division is the way to go. Yes, it's more writing, but it's also flexible. 
3x to the fifth minus 3x to the fifth cancels. Negative 14x squared plus 0. Negative 14x. Oh, I said x. All right, x to the fourth. 40x cubed minus 27 is 13x cubed. Bring down the next term, minus 120x squared. The next term, we need a negative 14x to the fourth. So it's negative 14 x squared because when I multiply I'm going to pick up an x squared and that's going to give me negative 14 x to the fourth plus 0 x cubed because of that 0 x here and then negative 14 times 9 is a lot whatever that is going to go here and just make sure you subtract and keep going and it's going to go on like this you do need to make sure you have a remainder zero, but if you look at what we did, we took a degree five and we're gonna get a degree three, so we dropped two degrees at one time, and we didn't have to use the rational zero theorem for this, so this saves us a little bit, and this is a slightly faster way to get all the factors out of this polynomial. Now, once you have this cubic polynomial, degree three, you then use a the rational zero theorem, find a rational zero, divide by that factor, and you, then you have degree two, and you can do several different things on quadratics to factor that.